it's blown up over the past few days regarding an interview given by Trent Alexander-Arnold to the excellent 442 magazine. Now, Trent's said what Trent has said, but there's been some reaction from both Erling Haaland and Ruben Diaz, but not from Pep Guardiola. Can you put this into context for us, please, Augie? What's been said and what's the reaction been? Yeah, so so Trent Alexander-Arnold, who, as we know, is a Liverpool born and bred, Liverpool fan as a kid, came through the ranks. He's given an interview where he said that Liverpool's success in recent years, albeit less than Man City's success in terms of trophies won, that it means more because of the way Liverpool did it, because they've had to, in many ways, fight for it, build a team, whereas he said that Man City is a, Man City is a machine that's made to win. And he, he suggested that, you know, because of the financial wealth they have at City, that what Liverpool have done means more. Because I guess, to paraphrase, they've had to come, overcome the kind of adversity that City haven't had to overcome. You know, Liverpool have had to overcome a formidable opponent in Man City to to win things, whereas City have had, you know, the best manager in the world, they've got the best striker in the world, they've probably got the, the wealthiest owners in the world. So whatever City win has been done, it has been done because they've got very wealthy owners. But let's be honest, they, they've also spent very wisely. So they've hired the right coach, they've they've made the right signings in the market. Other clubs have spent more. Chelsea, for instance, other clubs like Man United spent almost as much and not had anything like the success. So City have spent wisely but they do have big advantages which Liverpool haven't had so that was Alexander Arnold's point that yeah. what Liverpool have done has been remarkable in terms of they've done it despite Man City but obviously Erling Haaland and Ruben Diaz have hit back as you'd expect them to do but it just looks a little bit like that Alexander Arnold's comments have got under City's skin a little bit because I do know that while City have been an amazing team under Pep Guardiola there is a, a mindset amongst the supporters and people some of the people at the club that they haven't had the credit that they have deserved for their achievements over the years. They've not had the love that maybe they want. Whenever Liverpool wins something on Man United, you know, we do go into overdrive as the media talk about how great it is because they're the biggest clubs, they're the most successful clubs, they've the biggest fan base, they've got the greatest stories. And City feel that at times they get overlooked. So that's the context that Alexander Arnold has maybe caught a nerve ahead of the biggest yeah. game of the season. Yeah, it is. We'll get LME's thoughts on the reaction of both Jurgen and Pep after we hear from both managers. He's born in Liverpool. He stood on the bins before he played for the club. He played through all youth teams. And you, you, what would you think in that situation? One of our slogans, what I love, is, is this means more. And it means more to us. We have no clue exactly what 100% what it means to other people. But what happens here means more to us. We had two years ago a parade after winning the League Cup and the FA Cup, losing the Champions League finding the night before, losing the league for a point, tell me a city where you have a parade and it looks like we won all these trophies with, without having them. That's, the, the club is special to us. If it's not special to other people, yeah, we cannot change that. But that when we feel it like that, why shouldn't we be allowed to say it? They defend the club not just pointing this guy, but they have done many years on the pitch. Every single three days, that is the best way. So, if we have done it, I could answer him, but why? So, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> so it's what it is. It's very incredible, proud to what we have done, and and the way is not needs that to prove me my players what really really feels, what really are. <laughs> you need to try to do it. Okay, I like Pep's response here. He, he was basically asked about it. He said, I wish him well. I hope he has a speedy recovery from his injury. Next question. And then he was pressed on this. Okay, let's cut to the chase, LME. Augie thinks that Trent's comments on Liverpool may be getting under City's skin ahead of this game. What do you reckon? I'm glad. And I hope they get under the skin. And I kind of, listen... As a Peruvian who loves telenovelas, like, I want more drama here. Go for it, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Just go further on. Say, they have no right celebrating as much as we do. It means so much more for Liverpool. And then Man City on their side can put Phil Foden in front and say, how about this kid from Stockport who joined Manchester City when he was four? What, what does it mean to him when he wins the Premier League? So, you know, I want a little bit more fire in this rivalry. The two best teams in the Premier League, arguably in Europe. And, you know, let's make it more dramatic. That's what I want. I mean, I think there's also two arguments here. One is 
okay, how much more does it mean to one side than the other one? But I don't think you should take away the fact that a Manchester City fan that's gone through hell and back, just like Mark Ogden said, that sometimes they feel overlooked because of their neighbors on the red side of Manchester have been paid so much attention, especially specifically in the 90s when Man City was struggling themselves. It means a lot to them as well. History is an important part of this context. But I want more fire. I want somebody from Man City to just be like, you know what, Trent? Shut it. It means much more to us as well because we've got local kids who are professionals in the first team. Let's get it on. And then I'll just be eating my popcorn, salivating all of it. That's the thing. I mean, the bottom line is you do your talking on the pitch. Okay, I'm just intrigued if Coronation Street was a telenovela, what that would be like. But let's not go down that road. You spoke to Klopp at the press conference uh, this week ahead of this game. Let's focus more on the game because everyone will be watching this weekend. It's a fantastic one. Any little nuggets you picked up? From the press conference, any team news or Mohamed Salah, will he start? What did you learn this morning? Well, the, the big doubt for Liverpool is Kanata. He was he went off last night during the game against Sparta Pride. Now, it looks like he's going to be unlikely to be fit, but Salah, obviously we know that Salah and Dominic Shavoslai came on in the final stages against against Sparta. And that, that for me, was the big thing in, in the sense that Klopp's got them back on the pitch and psychologically they now know that when they step out of the pitch against City at the weekend, it's not their first game back. They've, they've got some minutes in the belt. So... I think both those guys will play. And I think, you know, we know that they've missed Salah, but Shavosla has been a really big player for Liverpool this season and they have missed him recently, despite the fact results wouldn't suggest it. They really have in the sense of what he brings to, to the game against the top teams. They missed him against Arsenal, for instance. So, you know, they're, they're the big returns for me. But, you know, I thought Klopp was, he was in a really upbeat, relaxed mood today. And he, he kind of, he was smiling all the way through the Trent Alexander-Arnold question. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say that he's, he, he's showing that kind of, you know, relaxation that he would have because he's leaving at the end of the season. Obviously, he wants to win the title, but it, it, it was very kind of complimentary about Pep, saying that Pep's the greatest man in the world. And I actually said to him, look, what, why are you saying that? Why is he better than you? And he, he, he couldn't really answer it. He said, well, maybe it's a matter of taste. You know, some people like the way I play, other players like people like the way that Pep plays. But I think Klopp, to be fair, is a world-class manager. And I, I wouldn't say it's a, a slam dunk in the sense that Pep is the greatest manager in the world because Klopp has had to work to different restrictions had a different mentality he's not the advantage that club that Pep's maybe had over the years at Barcelona and at Bayern Munich he had Borussia Dortmund a club that had to fight against Bayern when he arrived at Liverpool they were nowhere near competitive so you know Klopp undersells himself a little bit there maybe that's part of the mind games mm -hmm. you know we haven't had enough mind games as LME said mind games in the Premier League are great you know yeah. managers and coaches trying to get under each other's skin try to unnerve each other and I think Klopp's demeanour today suggested that Liverpool are in a really good place. And I think he knows that when the game starts at the weekend, Anfield will be noisy. City don't like going there. They've got a really poor record there. So maybe the smiling Klopp is the dangerous Klopp because it means that he's ready for it. And I think that Liverpool know that this is their big chance to take a massive stride to the title. Mm. You spoke about that record and LME. Two goals from Gundogan, one from Raheem Sterling and one from Phil Foden. And Manchester City win four goals to one at Anfield in 2021. They haven't got any other league wins at Anfield since 2003. Why is that? Well, and that 2021 February win, by the way, was in an empty Anfield as well. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to add some context to that. But for two, here's another one for you. Two Premier League matches, only two out of the last 30 between Liverpool and Man City, have been wins for the away side. So I think that says a lot. And also, I think it says a lot about the fact that Liverpool have dominated in terms of when they host this specific game. And I think the answer to your question is actually pretty simple. I, Anfield, to me, is one of the most hostile grounds for any visiting team. And you, as the opponent, have to be ready. No doubt about it. Manchester City and Pep Guardiola will always feel like they're ready. But I think the emotional connotations of specifically what's going to happen this weekend, which is Jurgen Klopp's final Premier League encounter against Man City in the Premier League at Anfield, is going to mean a lot. I, I think Augie mentioned it a little bit here, and I'll echo it. I think that this game this weekend will feel like a final for Liverpool because of all the emotional baggage that comes with it. And I think that from the records, statistically speaking, the fact that only two uh, wins have come to the away side in the last 30 Premier League matches on both sides, mm -hmm. as the had, uh, and, and Anfield, says a lot about how that crowd is a 12th man. So I expect exactly the same thing 
uh, this weekend. And like Augie said, Jurgen Klopp feels relaxed because I think his team know exactly what they need to do. Will it happen? That's another question, but I think they'll be more than ready for it. Augie, let's group City's next two league games together at Anfield and at home to Arsenal. Privately, if you sat down with Pep Guardiola and said, I'm going to give you four points, doesn't matter how you get them, one draw and, and one win, where it, it is, whether it's at Anfield, your win, and a draw against Arsenal at home or vice versa, does he take that? I think he'd take it if it meant that the win was at Anfield. I do think that a draw at Anfield leaves them behind Liverpool, doesn't it? And I think that's the, yeah. that is the problem because... Liverpool, for me, are, are not going to drop many more points. So City really need to get ahead of them at some point. So, you know, four points. I, I think they need six. I, I think I think both teams need to win this game to have a real... Obviously, they both got a chance to title. But if they want to be favourites, if they want to kind of make it them in pole position, they have to win. Because a draw means that Liverpool just remain a point ahead and, and City are nibbling away. But City will know that Liverpool might not lose any more points. You know, they've got... They played at Arsenal... They played at Tottenham, you know, so they've got some very big games out of the way. So Liverpool could go from this point on and win every game. Unlikely, but teams have done it. So City need to win. They need to win this game. And if they win this game, then a draw at home to Arsenal might be okay. But knowing Pep Guardiola as we do, they'll want to win both and score lots of goals at the same time. Mm -hmm. It should be a good one. We're expecting goals. And I don't think we'll get a repeat of the Man United Liverpool game at Anfield a few weeks ago, which was nil-nil because United just went and parked the bus and they got what... What they were looking for at their best, LME, who's a better team, Liverpool or Manchester City? Oh. <laughs> Manchester City. Uh, just the overall look of the depth of the squad. And, and now that they're all healthy, it has to be Manchester City because their spine is just so wonderfully threatening. You've got Ruben Diaz, Kevin De Bruyne, Erlen Haaland, you know, that, that just controls so much. And then Whenever one of them doesn't work, you have somebody else that can live up to it, like Julian Alvarez, who's a, a, key, a key component as well, Bernardo Silva, of course, and Phil Foden, who alongside Oli Watkins is the best player in the Premier League right now. So I would go with Manchester City. But the fact that this is at Anfield, the fact that this is Jurgen Klopp's final game against Man City and Anfield, the fact that Mohamed Salah is back and Dominic Stobislai as well, and Darwin Nunez feeling, and Luis Diaz, this is going to be a really, really good game. But Man City, to me, are on paper the stronger, the stronger team. Augie? Okay. Yeah, it's a tough one, this. You know, can I, can I answer in a different kind of? I, I don't think you can separate the two teams who's the best. If you had to say you can buy a season ticket one of these clubs, which would it be? I, I would go for Liverpool because I, I just think... Because it's cheaper. <laughs> 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 I just think that the... They're a more exciting team to watch, and, and maybe that's because they're not as good as City. Maybe they've got more flaws, and maybe that they leave you guessing a little bit more. With City, it, they can be so ruthless that I'm not going to use the Gary Neville word when he said they were boring, but it can be quite predictable that if City get ahead, it's ruthless and it's not. It's entertaining only if you're a City fan. I think with Liverpool, you, you go to a game not sometimes not knowing what can happen. That makes it more exciting. You know that you know in Liverpool that. They could be 3-2 down with five minutes to go and win 4-3. And City could do that as well. But I just think Liverpool have got a bit more... There's a bit more stardust, a bit more... I don't know. It's hard to put your finger on it, but Liverpool, for me, are a more exciting team. And I think the way they play, it, they take more chances. City don't really take many chances because so, they control games so much. But obviously, who's the best team? Well, they're, they're different styles, aren't they? They're different styles. But if you ask, if you had to say to me, you've got a free season ticket at each team. No, I'm not paying for it now. It's a free season ticket. Mm -hmm. I'd take the one out of it. <laughs> The analogy I would give you, and, and LME, you spend a fair bit of time in the UK. We've got a lot of viewers as well um, who are not in the United Kingdom. I'm going to give you a snooker analogy. For me, Manchester City are Stephen Hendry, and Liverpool are maybe Ronnie O'Sullivan. And that they've both won the same number of titles, but when Stephen Hendry was in his prime, he was pretty much unbeatable, and you just couldn't really find a way. And Ronnie O'Sullivan came with the flair, but you just didn't know what you were going to get. So I totally get what you're saying, and as far as the league title is concerned, LME, with regards to after this one, who's got the easier run-in, and who do you expect, as Augie said, to drop fewer points between now and the end of the season? Well, let's have a look, shall we? I mean, Augie mentioned the schedule specifically from Liverpool side, but one thing I'm not, I wouldn't say worried, that's the wrong word, but one thing I'm just looking ahead is that because they're still going for you know, other trophies, including the FA Cup, the Champions League, they've won the Carabao Cup, you know, and they are still dealing with some injuries. I, I, I'm hoping for, from a Liverpool fan's perspective that they stay healthy 
because that schedule is overloaded with European competition. Of course, they got the, you know, they still got to play Manchester United in the quarterfinals. Brighton's not going to be easy. Manchester United at Old Trafford. Um, they got Tottenham, Villa at Villa Park as well. And, you know, it, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of important games there for Liverpool and making sure that they stay healthy is a key component. And when you look at Manchester City, Arsenal, Brighton again, they also have to play Villa, Tottenham, um, you know, and then the schedule gets a little bit easier and then the Champions League, of course. So I think that Liverpool have to do everything they can to maintain this momentum and make sure that they stay healthy. But the run, the run specifically is easier for Manchester City. Mm -hmm. So Liverpool really have to win this, I think. Yeah, just finally on this game, looking at the last four matches of the season for both of these two teams, Liverpool at West Ham, Augie, home to Spurs at Villa and then home to Wolverhampton. For Manchester City, their last four sound a lot better. Away to Forest, home to Wolves, away to Fulham and home to West Ham. So I know managers say I'm going to take each game as it comes, one at a time, not looking ahead. When you look at those last four fixtures, I would be amazed if City mm. were to drop points. Some pressure does weird things to you. You might start to think if you're Jurgen Klopp, and let's not forget Arsenal, of course, because they're in the title race as well. It might be a good point for us. However, with the fixture still to come, maybe it's worth pushing ahead a little bit. And that might start this weekend for Liverpool against Manchester City, Ogie. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, those, those, those final four games are, you know, City will get 12 points. We know that. We can say that right away. They will get 12 points in those games. That's what happens with Man City. As I was saying before, they are ruthlessly predictable. Liverpool, you would never rule them out, but they are tough games. You know, Villa away, tough game. That That is, that that could be Villa, you know, pushing for, to, to clinch top four. So, you, know, you can't underestimate or, over, sorry, overstate how big that game will be. But, it is all about momentum as well. And I think, you know, let's say that City, for instance, that, you know, they could get a double header against an Arsenal in the Champions League, you know, double header quarter final against Arsenal, playing in the league, three three meetings against the same team in, in less than a couple of weeks. That that could drain their resources as well. So a lot depends on how Arsenal or how Liverpool, sorry, City go in the Champions League. I think Liverpool, the Europa League, that in many ways could be almost like a rest period because they're so strong, unless they get maybe by a labour queue, and that Liverpool could beat anybody with half a team in that competition anyway. So, mm -hmm. if if they feel that it's draining their resources, they could take it easy. City can't do that in the Champions League. The Champions League has to be 100% all the time. So, Liverpool might have an advantage, but it really does depend on what happens on Sunday. You know, the team that comes out of this game on top are the favourites, and that's that is because they're so good. Yeah, it's fascinating, and we'll have full reaction to Liverpool against Manchester City. I'll be joined by our ESPN colleagues right after the game for a live stream on YouTube.